This set of three videos will focus on the O in lame cow, which stands for ocean currents, not just oceans. As you remember, water itself impacts an area's climate and usually keeps the average temps more regular. Ocean currents can do more than just keep temperatures constant. The essential questions we'll focus on are on your screen. You will, no you will notice that we will be discussing two different types of ocean currents. The first two videos will discuss what surface currents are, what causes them, and how they impact an area's climate. And then the third video will discuss the same issues, however, for deep ocean currents. Remember, watch the videos as many times as you need. Here we go! If you remember back to our wind discussion, the main purpose of wind is to try to even out air pressure, to move a large pile of air to an area that doesn't have as much. Ocean currents do the same thing, however, instead of moving just mass, the main goal of oceans is to move energy. Ocean currents are constantly trying to move excess amounts of energy, uh, which means high temperature water, to areas of low energy. Again, that means low temperature water. And that's really it. Ocean currents are trying to uh, balance out Earth's energy. Now, a consequence of this is that the ocean currents also move or transport a lot of nutrients, like carbon and nitrogen that we talked about a long time ago from one place to another um, along with the organism. You know, think of the EAC in, in Finding Nemo. Somewhat related to this is how ocean currents have and will continue to impact the global commerce and, and industry. Trading goods across the oceans relies heavily on ocean currents. Now, as discussed earlier, there are two main types of ocean currents. Surface currents and deep ocean or deep water currents. The ocean currents really only impact the top 400 meters or only 10% of the entire ocean while the deep ocean currents move the rest of the ocean water. Just because the surface currents only move or only impact a small amount of water does not mean they do not impact climate. Before we get there though, I want you to pause the video and, and predict something for me. Predict the three factors that cause or impact surfing, surface currents. Write them over on the right hand side of your notes. You got this, I know you know this. So pause the video. Now the three forces that impact surface currents are solar heating, winds, and the Coriolis effect. Did you pr predict them correctly? It seems like the sun, I mean, is impacting every aspect of climate. And the ocean is, is really no exception. Unequal heating of the Earth's surface is not only, does not only impact the land and the air, it also is impacting water. Just as you witnessed in the ocean lab, the temperature of water has a great impact on the density of water. The ocean water is, is exactly the same. Warm water is going to rise and cool water is going to sink. One of the main factors impacting surface currents is wind. That's why we had to do wind first. The wind is going to be the force pushing water molecules horizontal. You know it's you know, causing them to go up and down vertically, but it's the wind that's causing them to go horizontally. The stronger the winds, the faster the ocean currents. And you can't forget, our, forget about our friend, the Coriolis effect. Since the Earth is rotating, anything that is fluid is going to curve different directions. And water is really no exception. Now this map of all the different ocean currents, I want you to notice something. Notice some are labeled with red colors for warm water and others are blue for cool water. Notice where the red and blue arrows start and also notice where they are traveling. You should see the earth that's trying to balance out all that energy. Second, you should notice most of these currents run into another current and eventually make one big circular pattern. You know, this all comes from our friend Coriolis effect. Now really quick, pause the video on the right hand side uh, of your notes, answer the questions on your screen. Your star should be on the equator. Now why? Well, you guys know it. It, sh it should be there um, and you should have said because of the direct rays the equator gets on a constant basis every single day. Now, 
This slide just reviews everything that we've been discussing about energy so far. The surface water is being heated unevenly. That is easily seen in the diagram on the right hand side. Now the earth, what it's trying to do is just even out all of the colors uh, and does so or tries to do so with surface and deep ocean currents. What you'll see later is that the surface currents and the deep ocean currents, they're working together. Now, here's why only 10% of the ocean is impacted by surface currents. Like I said before, the horizontal movement of surface currents comes from the wind. Wind can be strong. You guys, you guys have felt that before. However, it's not strong enough to overcome the great power of friction. Air molecules are not overly heavy, so it does not take a ton of force to get them moving really, really fast. Water molecules are, on the other hand, are heavy compared to air, so it takes a ton of force to get them going. So when the air bumps into the water, the wa that water doesn't move very far. However, unlike air, liquid water molecules are bonded to one another. I mean, it's not like overly strong bonds, like solids, uh, but they are bonded to one another. So the cool thing is if you move one, you move others. The problem here is, is friction though. As you get deeper into the water, the friction force of all of those other water molecules all over the place increases. This reduces the effect of the uh, wind or the force from the air. Now each of the arrows represent how fast the water molecules move due to the wind. These arrows right here. Uh, you'll notice the arrows get smaller the deeper you get. You should also notice that the water molecules don't go in the same direction as the wind. This green arrow is the direction of the wind. All the other arrows are for water and they're going off um, to the right. Hmm. Now I wonder why that is. Again, read through the questions really quick. Pause the video, answer the questions on the right hand side of your notes. Restart the video when you're finished. Now the Coriolis effect happens due to Earth's rotation, let's not forget about that. It causes air to curve or bend to the right in the northern hemisphere and to the left in the southern hemisphere. Now let's see how that impacts water. Alright, so hopefully you were able to figure out the reason why the water molecule arrows in the previous pictures are pointing to the right and it's because of uh, the Coriolis effect. Now the Coriolis effect works in a very very similar way as air as it does in water. You know, it curves um, water to the right in the northern hem hemisphere and to the left in the southern hemisphere. Now this picture right here is of something called a gyre. Um, and this particular one is found in the northern hemisphere, but you can also find them uh, in the southern hemisphere as well. Now, the reason why I know that this one is, this, this particular gyre is in the northern hemisphere is by the motion clockwise or counterclockwise. Going back to um, the high-low pressure that we've talked about before, um, we've got clockwise motion that happens in the northern hemisphere. Southern hemisphere uh, gyres are going to spin the other way, counterclockwise. Okay, so this whole picture right here should make a heck of a lot more sense and really you should be able to uh, tell a friend, a brother, sister, your parents about what all of this means. There's a lot going on here. Um, I might practice that or at least try to you know, practice that to yourself. Explain everything that's going on in this picture and why it's happening. All right, we'll see you in the next video.